What's up, guys? It's Calista. I am going to be introducing to you guys something that's a little bit different from what I typically do. So this is going to be kind of a three-part mini-series, uh, which I'm cheesily calling Need for Speed. I'm like secretly super excited. Well, not secretly anymore, but we're pretty excited about calling it that uh, because I find it hilarious. But this is going to be all about improving your speeds across the three major components of Lords Mobile. So by three components, I mean research, construction, and training speed. And this first video is going to be focused on improving your research speed so what I'm not going to be doing is giving you guys feedback on focus on your monster research focus on your economy research that's not what this is about this is going to be about how to get efficient and how to focus on the right types of items to help improve your speed and speed is incredibly important for you to progress quickly as quickly as possible and as optimally as possible so the first place that we're starting is with our academy no surprise there it is our main research building and as that academy is leveled up you are going to see that it is directly impacting the speed with which you do those researches and you're going to notice as is typical in lords mobile the jump from 24 to 25 is pretty significant from 17 to 30 percent um so Try to focus on leveling up your academy as soon as you're able to, because you are only you're not only going to be able to unlock new researches, but you're also able to take advantage of the cool fact that you get additional research speed. The second piece that I want you guys to keep focused on is your gear. So let's use a filter, click research speed, and let's check out what gear is available to us. The first one is a headgear. It's a coronet, has pretty kick-ass um, army attacks. Uh, that people love to use. I see this equipped all the time. It has a 10% research speed. Not tremendously amazing. It's kind of like basic. It's like a nice to have. I wouldn't necessarily create that for that. Same thing with the chest, the terror shield, something that I use, but I use it more because of the infantry and the army max HP. To me, the research speed is a nice to have. Again, something I wouldn't necessarily recommend for the sole purpose of that. Griffin walkers, however, are pretty amazing because they not only improve your research speed at a 17.5, but they also give you construction speed. So when you're thinking about being efficient in speeds, Griffin walkers are definitely something that you should invest in and get. When it comes to main hand, definitely do not recommend the champion blades if, the, if like your focus is research speed, right? Like those are champ set equipment you are getting those to kick butt you're getting them to fight you're not really getting them for the research buffs the electric lens however is a really good um kind of main hand research focused gear to have vice grips i see all the time people always make vice grips they're pretty simple to make uh you don't necessarily need to spend and they don't require a ton of resources and then for your accessories this is a no-brainer all you guys that are doing research, and I rarely say this because to me, Lords Mobile, the thing that is so cool about it is there's a billion ways to do things and you do it your own way. I will very rarely, unless I'm super passionate and a thousand percent really feel that that is the way to go, will say something. This is one of those moments where I would say, in addition to like, please do not have more than one farm, it's Lunar Flutes. Make three Lunar Flutes. Get those golden as soon as possible. Those bad boys are the ones you're going to equip every time you're popping a research. They are super easy to make. You do not need to spend money. They are very, very free to play friendly. Lunar Flutes are probably the number one piece of equipment that I would recommend new players start working on immediately. Uh, and the way that you are able to uh, evolve those and forge them to the next level, they use coal, platinum, and feathers. And you can get those three things through gathering, through gathering your basic RS tiles, right? So you're going to want to try to gather uh, higher level RS tiles to get some of those better quality items, right? So you want to get some blues, right? As opposed to a bunch of whites. But this is not difficult to make. I have a ton of friends that are free to play. They all have these three golden flutes. They are so important and they are going to be very, very helpful to you guys in the beginning of the game, mid game, end game, whenever you're doing research. And now that we have new research coming, it's still going to be important, right? So this is going to be something that as long as this game is, is active, like you're going to be doing research. That is probably going to be like a definitive. So definitely recommend the Lunar Flutes when it comes to the gear. Uh, the second, the third thing you should keep in mind are your talents. When you're popping your research, make sure that you have used all your talent points to maximize research one and research two that you can see on the right hand of the screen. Those are really important. And again, you do not need to stay in this talent set. I never recommend that. You also do not need to stay 
with your lunar flutes equipped all day long that you have a research running, it's only important to do this when you're about to start a research. So please keep that in mind because they get that question a lot. Put on your gear, set up your talents, Pop on your boost when you're about to start a research. That's when it matters. You do not need to keep it that way throughout the entire research. Or if you think about it, in those bigger researches, you would never switch off of it. Um, the next thing that I want to mention to you guys are your heroes. So there are heroes that will give you research boosts. The first one up is Vengeful Centaur. He is a pay-to-play hero. Not overly expensive, but definitely not cheap as none of the pay-to-play heroes are. Uh, and he will give you a 25% boost when golden to your research. Next up is Trickster. This one is one that is free to play. One of the first, if not the first heroes that you guys should get golden should be Trickster because he has a really great research boost, 25%, and he's going to help you with your monster hunting. So as you're thinking about improving your monster hunting, you get a two for one here, right? So it's in your best interest, definitely work on him. A couple of more pay to play heroes, Femme Fatale, again, pretty standard uh, numbers, 25% when golden. Witch Doll is so underrated, guys. Look at the boost. She is like the queen of this little mini series that I'm doing, and she's the one that gave me the idea. Construction, research, and training. She helps speeds across all three major tenets of Lords Mobile. Um, she will help your research boost to 25% when she is golden. So she is a really great pay to play hero when you think about being efficient. Kasim is another pay to play has a research boost when golden reaches 25%. That's kind of the standard, I would say, um, across pay to play. Petite Devil, another pay to play, same numbers pretty much. Uh, and she also gives you that research boost. Dark Follower, another underrated hero. So he has a research boost and a training boost. Research boost goes up to 25%, but he is also somebody that you should consider um, leveling up. Okay, so that wraps it up for our heroes that um, have research boosts. Something to keep in mind is research boosts and boosts in general that are research construction or training are passive. They're administrative. That means you do not need to have these heroes as your main hero. You do not need to put the hero on your wall. You are getting the benefit regardless. The last piece I want to touch upon are boosts. The first type of boost is a turf boost. They come in 10% and 20% and primarily you would get these boosts from uh, packs. So purchasing uh, different packs that they have on sale will usually have 10% uh, research boost. And I think as you go, kind of go up the ladder um, into kind of the, the 20, maybe $50 range, you start to get some of these 20% boosts. Again, the way to use these boosts, guys, is you're gonna be doing more than one research. Maybe you're doing a watcher research event, hell event. And what you would want to do is pop on your 10% or your 20% and hopefully be able to do more than one research during that hour that they are active to be able to maximize the benefit to you. There are also two other types of boosts that are kingdom specific. So the first one is a wonder based boost and they're part of the title. So if you are friendly with the guild that is currently ruling, you're going to want to make sure you are asking for that scholar title. Um, it is a 10% increase to your research speed. Again, you only need it when you first pop on that research. You don't need it the entire time. Lastly, our kingdom boosts. These are boosts that the overlord uh, would basically activate for the entire kingdom. It would last four hours. The overlord would pay 1,800 gems. Hopefully your overlord is awesome and will give you a heads up of when these are occurring, but they do last four hours. So even if they don't, you have enough time to kind of see that they're going on and they help you by 10%. So when you're thinking about if efficiency, especially you guys that are doing some of your T4 um, researches, you want to make sure that you can take advantage of the kingdom boost. And if you can ask for the title, the scholar title that you asked for it, that you are able to save up um, some sort of additional turf boost, because all those things are going to shave off days and days off your research. And some of those researches can take so, so long. Hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. Thank you so much for watching.